Hey everyone, this is Sir Amel and in this video, I will be discussing with you about the food chain and the food web. We know that in an ecosystem, organisms are interdependent on each other for their survival. This interdependence either forms a simple linear relationship where a particular organism is dependent on another specific organism or a rather complicated network of relationships by which many species are interrelated. Each organism will occupy a certain position within that ecosystem and this position is referred to as a trophic level. The process where organism number two is dependent on organism number one and at the same time organism number three will be dependent on organism number two for food forms a simple linear sequence of organisms where nutrients and energy are being transferred between these organisms and this simple process of eating and being eaten in an ecosystem is termed a food chain. In this particular video, we can see that the first trophic level is being occupied by these species of grasses that is being fed upon by the sheep. The sheep here are at the second trophic level. They are the primary consumers. They are herbivorous in nature and they are dependent upon uh, this specific species of grass. And let's say that a wolf preys upon one of these sheep. Now that wolf will occupy the third trophic level and it is a secondary consumer and we can see here it forms a simple linear chain where plant is being eaten by herbivore and herbivore is being eaten by carnivore. Taking a look at other examples of food chains, we have here two examples of food chain where one is in the terrestrial ecosystem and one is in the aquatic ecosystem. And by looking at these organisms, we can tell that this particular ecosystem is a grassland ecosystem and this particular ecosystem or food chain belongs to a marine ecosystem. So at the first trophic level, we have here the primary consumers that is occupied by a species of grass and uh, some flowers we can say in this grassland ecosystem and in the marine ecosystem we have phytoplankton as the primary producers and they occupy the first trophic level. These are the organisms that uses photosynthesis to prepare food to make organic matter. At the second trophic level we have in the grassland ecosystem a few uh, insects like for example a honey bee which will be dependent upon the nectar of this particular flower and a species of grasshopper or uh, locust that will be that will be dependent upon uh, the grass for its food okay. at the third trophic level we have grassland ecosystem uh, some highly carnivorous insects like for example you have a hornet here that will prey upon honeybees and you have a tiger beetle here that will prey upon all types of insects so in the grassland ecosystem these carnivorous insects occupy the third trophic level and they form the secondary consumers if we look at the marine ecosystems we have here you know some species of small fish some crustaceans like crabs and krills, they occupy the third trophic levels and are the secondary consumers. They will be dependent upon the zooplankton. And we know that at the second trophic level, the zooplankton will be dependent upon phytoplankton in this particular marine ecosystem. At the fourth trophic level, in the grassland ecosystem, we can see that a frog or a toad occupies this position and this animal will be dependent upon these insects. 
it can also occupy the third trophic level by directly depending upon the primary consumers or the herbivorous insects and then if we take a look at the marine ecosystem we have a yellowfin tuna that is dependent upon these small fishes as well as other crustaceans for its food now let's take a look at the fifth trophic level in both these food chains in the grassland ecosystem we have a species of snake that will prey upon uh, the toad or a frog and in the marine ecosystem we have we have a dolphin that will be preying upon the tuna and again at the same time this dolphin may occupy the fourth trophic level and be directly dependent upon the crustaceans or small fishes at the top of the food chain here we have the sixth trophic level in the grassland ecosystem we have a hawk or an eagle that will prey upon snake again this eagle may occupy the fifth trophic level and directly be dependent upon the frogs or toads similarly with the shark here the shark can occupy the sixth trophic level in this particular food chain and directly be dependent upon the dolphin for its food or may prey upon the tuna for its food and occupy the fifth trophic levels okay so these are two contrasting ecosystem two different food chains but let's say for example let's say this eagle here is a, a fish eating eagle then this particular eagle will be predating or preying upon small fishes of this particular ecosystem and now these two ecosystems are linked through this food chain and may form a complicated food web now when we have a series of interconnecting food chains we get a food web for example here we can see that the school of fishes are being hunted by this particular seal this same seal will be preyed upon by a polar bear which is a land carnivore so we have here a single a linear chain but at the same time within this same environment and same ecosystem we can see that the school of fishes are also being hunted by dolphins they are also being hunted by aquatic birds as well as other predatory fishes so they form not just one single chain with the seal and the polar bear but also other chains with the dolphins and other predatory species within this same ecosystem so we get this complicated network of food chains that form a food web here in this picture we can see that you know different chains different food chains are forming different complicated networks okay so we can see here for example this particular acacia tree is being fed upon by a giraffe and a rhinoceros this, these two uh, herbivores are then uh, being hunted by a lion and not to say that you know an adult lion will try to take on uh, on an adult rhinoceros but i've seen instances where a lion will hunt down a baby rhino at the same time i've also seen videos where a pride of lion will kill an adult giraffe and eat the giraffe yeah. again in the same uh, environment here the same ecosystem we can see that a species of grass will be eaten by a rat a grasshopper as well as a rhinoceros the rat will be eaten by a jungle cat a jungle cat will be eaten by um, let's say a boa constrictor or a python for example this python will be eaten by a baboon and the baboon will be eaten by a leopard now the leopard will also prey upon uh, a gazelle and the gazelle will be eating some shrubs or trees small trees okay again in the same environment we have the grasshopper being eaten by a robin a robin that is being eaten by a skunk okay and the skunk that is being eaten by um, a vulture well not actually hunted or being killed by a vulture but actually you know uh, a vulture here is a scavenger in this particular ecosystem so this vulture will feed upon the carcass of the dead bodies of the rhinoceros 
and then you have the dead bodies of the giraffe okay the dead body of the lion the dead carcass of the leopard the dead carcass of the monkey or uh, the baboon sorry okay the dead carcass of the skunk and even the dead carcass of the deer so the vultures here play quite an essential role in their environments they are also known as nature's cleanup crew they do the dirty work by cleaning up the dead decaying flesh of animals and they recycle the carcass and they help by keeping the ecosystems healthy thus in an ecosystem various food chains are linked together and intersect each other to form a complex network called a food web one thing that i have not mentioned here are the decomposers they form uh, a part of another separate food chain which is called as the detritus food chain and the decomposers they occupy the first trophic level of this particular food chain up to this point i've only mentioned the grazing food chain where the first trophic level are occupied by uh, autotrophs okay if in a food chain the first trophic level is occupied by decomposers then that particular food chain will be a detritus food chain and this food chain will also be linked to the grazing food chain okay in a way that you know like for example the dead decaying matter organic matter of both plants and animals will be acted upon or will be fed upon by these decomposers okay and these decomposers will also form you know uh, the food material of uh, many macro uh, animals in the soil such as earthworms and you know beetles and woodlouse and these insects and mollusks will form uh, a nutrition type for other organisms within that environment such as birds and other insects and small mammals okay and these small mammals will be then eaten by other larger carnivores so the detritus food chain again will be linked to the grazing food chain okay so what is the importance of a food chain and a food web within an ecosystem by studying the food chain or the food web it will help us to understand how you know these relationships occur within an ecosystem how one organism will be dependent on another organism for its survival how these organisms interact what roles they will play in that ecosystem whether one organism is a predator another organism is a prey whether a specific organism is a decomposer okay it will also help us to understand how food how uh, nutrients are being cycled within a particular e ecosystem and how the energy flow through these biotic as well as abiotic factors within a particular ecosystem we can also find out the movement of toxic substances in a particular um, environment for example here in this image we can see that a particular poison that has been used in the santa monica mountains of california scientists and researchers were able to trace how this toxin that was used to kill you know invasive rodents species of rodents how you know it has amplified within the wild local wildlife of this particular uh, reserve okay by studying the food chain of the local wildlife in this particular uh, reserve they were able to trace back the toxin okay to its original source so that's why food chain and food web are very important because they help us to study the relationships within an ecosystem and also measure the health of an ecosystem 
So I hope this video has helped you to understand the basic concepts of food chains and food webs within an ecosystem. Give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe.